Paul Comfort, and we're in Edmonton, Canada, a city known for its oil, like its famous hockey team, the Edmonton Oilers. But something fantastic is happening in this northern Canadian city, a search for new, cleaner energies. We're going to take you right up and show them to you. Hydrogen and battery electric powered buses. We'll take you to one of the largest battery electric bus garages in all of North America. Plus, we'll talk to some of their leaders at the transit system here and all of Canada's transit leaders from the Canadian Urban Transit Association Conference. And, of course, we're going to take you and show you the food and culture of this amazing Canadian city, all on Transit Unplugged TV. Tell us about where we're at and the significance of it. So we're in one of the original stations of the LRT here in Edmonton, Alberta. It's underground, they dug tunnels. It was actually Canada's third subway after Toronto and Montreal. Opened in 1978 and some of the original cars are still running. They're 45 years old. You can hear some of them in the background, one's about to pull in. And this was really a turning point for the city of Edmonton. Now Edmonton was really visionary in the sense that they were the first city in North America to introduce modern light rail technology in 1978, followed by Calgary and then San Diego. In fact, the first cars were assembled right here in the shop that then became the maintenance facility afterwards. And it was a joint procurement between those three systems. And it's interesting that those three systems all still have those original cars. Cars. The ones in San Diego were sold to Argentina and are still running there. Jen, I want to go to the Edmonton Oilers hockey game, but I got one question. How do I get there? Well, Paul, we're going to get on our brand new Valley Line trains and get off at the 102 stop. Let's go. We're in the Ice District near Rogers Place getting ready to start a big hockey game with the Edmonton Oilers. This is wild. <laughs> Tailgating is a great tradition at most public sporting events. A lot of times it's done outside a stadium, but here at Rogers Place, where it's cold outside for hockey, it happens inside where there's food and fun and music and everybody gets ready to go into the game. This is the kind of traditional you got a chili bowl, you got a hot dog, you got your beer. This is tailgating at Rogers Place. Wayne Gretzky made a name for himself as the Great One, playing hockey for the Edmonton Oilers, where he led the team to four Stanley Cup championships and became the NHL's all-time leading goal scorer. Eddie Robar, you started out as the branch manager here in Edmonton and then moved up now to become the deputy city manager. But this whole hydrogen electric strategy for a city known for its oil is kind of your brainchild, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think uh, a lot of the city's brainchild, the innovation that we have in the city of Edmonton, the opportunity that we have to kind of try new technologies out has really given us a lot of opportunity to show the industry what's going on here. So building this program from 60 electric buses that we have right now, battery electric buses. Now we're kind of pivoting into the hydrogen space, uh, really trying to grow our electrification program here in the city of Edmonton and show people and showcase how to convert fleets in, in a cold weather environment. So Eddie, how does all this work? We're at the back motor here of the hydrogen bus. Yeah, I think the great thing about a hydrogen bus is, you know, we have our tanks on the roof. Okay. So we have 36 kilogram tanks on the roof of this bus. That roof that the hydrogen kind of feeds into our fuel cell, this big black box right here, that's our fuel cell. So it's a Ballard fuel cell. Um, that fuel cell for us, we just put oxygen and hydrogen into the fuel cell. There's a chemical reaction that happens in there. I won't go through all the, 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 tech, the technical terms of it, but that chemical reaction happens inside that fuel cell, and that's what creates the energy. That energy goes to a battery that drives the bus. So this is a fully electrified bus. And a lot of people, when they talk about uh, fuel cell buses, they wonder, what does that mean? Is it hydrogen? Is there an engine in there? This is the engine. Obviously, it doesn't look like a normal engine. But the byproduct of this fuel cell reaction is just heat and water. So, Eddie, what does it mean for cities like Edmonton, which is known for its oil, but now you're looking into all these other clean energy sources like electric and hydrogen? Yeah, I think the great thing about Alberta is, you know, we are known for our oil, but uh, really we're known for our energy. So when you look at hydrogen, you look at the work we're doing on the hydrogen space, it's really about the energy movement for, for, for Alberta. Alberta is prime for 
the work we do, we're definitely well versed in the energy sector. Like we have the people here, the talent here, the technical ability to do all this work. So being innovative, being on the forefront of this work makes it a lot easier when you have all of this around you. Edmonton and its connected municipality of Strathcona each have a hydrogen powered bus in their fleet. We took a road trip to see both of them, how they work and are maintained. Each agency is piloting this bus fuel technology and are pleased with how it's working. As Derek Hansen told me, he's the Director of Transit Fleet Maintenance for the City of Edmonton. All right, so Derek, tell us where we're at. So we're at the site of our first transit hydrogen fueling station. We're getting hydrogen from Suncor uh, for a fueling station built by HTEC, and it's supporting our bus, Strathcona County's bus, and uh, some long haul truck vehicles through the Alberta Motor Transportation Association. So really excited about this project. So here in Edmonton and Strathcona, you all have the first hydrogen powered buses in Canada and regular transit? We do right now. Yes. Obviously there were some that were tested in the Winter Olympics in Whistler, but in terms of buses in regular service right now, we've got the first, we've got the two that are running in Canada right now. That's great. So tell us about the buses themselves and how they're different from battery electric and those kind of things. Well, that's what's funny is it is actually a battery electric bus, but it's got an on-site fuel cell, which is the energy generator. So the drivetrain, the motor components, they're all driven by an electric system, just like a battery electric bus, but it's essentially a hybrid bus because it's taking in the hydrogen into the fuel cell. The fuel cell's powering the batteries, which is powering the bus. And what we're finding with the buses having byproducts of water and heat, that heat is really combating that energy loss on the battery thermal system in the winter time. And it's been a really effective vehicle for us in the winter. What a great time we've had here in Edmonton, Canada. North America's northernmost city with over a million people in population. Now we're going to take a little holiday walk. Edmonton is the fifth largest city in Canada and the capital city of the province of Alberta. The city hosts a year-round slate of festivals and is home to Canada's largest mall. Edmonton is one of Canada's sunniest cities. During the summer, it can have up to 17 hours of daylight. It's located on the North Saskatchewan River with a large river basin and is the gateway to Canada's north. So we are standing outside of the Strathcona Hotel, formerly the Strathcona Hotel, which we believe is the oldest wood structure remaining in all of Alberta and was a key point in Strathcona where the rail people came in and would stay in the hotel. It's an iconic piece of history here on White Ave. This is a pretty cool street. Yeah, this is White Avenue. So this is a provincially designated historic area. There's about five or six blocks that we're in the middle of right now, um, which means it's been all the buildings and the entire block is designated as an important part of history for all of Alberta, which means buildings can't be torn down. Um, grants are available to revitalize them and it's a really important part of our city, which dates back over a hundred years. So tell me about this. So this is the Fringe Theatre. Uh, the Fringe Theatre is one of our oldest uh, theatres in Old Strathcona and is responsible for producing the second largest international film festival in the entire world. And tell me about the streetcar system that comes through here. Yeah, so we also have a functioning streetcar, which some of their, right behind the Fringe Festival or Fringe Building, they actually store their old streetcars and restore them. Uh, and it runs throughout the summer and they are going to be operating a little bit this winter as well for one of our events that we're running. Um, and they do tours talking about the history of, this, of the streetcar and the rail and the corridor. So tell us about what's behind our shoulder here, all these great murals, they look amazing. Yeah, we uh, have been very fortunate to help support a lot of public art. Uh, we have over 70 murals and we have even created a mural map in our district. So behind us is our largest mural to date, which is uh, done by Okuda San Miguel from Spain, I believe. Uh, and that was done a few years ago. It was fundraised completely privately. Uh, we pitched in some money from our organization. Um, and then the Old Strathcona Youth Society was also done by a local artist, A.J. Loudon. And we have several murals all along the alley uh, and all the way from 99th to 109th Street around White Avenue. 
I'm excited to be at the CUDA conference, Canadian Urban Transit Association, here in Edmonton, where I'll be speaking to the Youth Summit uh, as a keynote speaker for them, talking about career journeys. And then also, we'll be speaking on leadership at this conference uh, with my good friend and collaborator, Mike Bismeyer, as well as we'll show you and talk to many of the transit leaders who are here from across the country. Change management. It's progressive. Accessibility. I would say electrification. I think I'd have to say collaboration. I would say innovation. It's sustainable. It's friendly. CUDA hosts a Young Leaders Summit that I addressed as a keynote speaker, sharing about my career journey and lessons learned that could help them on their career path. Then I conducted an on-stage mock interview panel, sharing tips on how to prepare for and speak when interviewed live. Great to be here. You've got a big audience here, nice crowd. Yes. Tell us about the conference here, the CUDA conference. Uh, well, it's our annual conference. We uh, we hold two per year, and this one is uh, special because it also includes a large uh, transit uh, expo and trade show, and that'll yeah. be coming up tomorrow. For those in America, people are familiar with APTA, mm -hmm. and they may not be as familiar with CUDA, but you're very similar organizations, right? You just represent Canada. Yes, very yeah. similar indeed. Yeah. Uh, representing manufacturers, local transit agencies, the businesses that support them and uh, governments and associations uh, are across the country that share similar values to us, so very much like uh, the American. Much of the public transportation in Canada is contracted out. I spoke with Arthur Nicolette, the CEO of one of the largest providers, TransDev Canada. You can hear this interview and others from our trip to Edmonton on the Transit Unplugged podcast. I also had the opportunity to be the kickoff speaker of the CUDA conference with my friend and colleague Mike Bismeyer. We shared about leadership, mentorship, and kindness, with my part focused on the five key traits of a future transit leader. Next, Edmonton Transit's general manager, Kerry Houghton McDonald, took us on a tour of one of their coolest bus garages, where they power and maintain 50 of their battery electric buses, plus hundreds of others. Carrie, thanks for having us in. This is an amazing garage. Tell us about it. Oh, we're so excited that you're here. So this is our Kathleen Andrews Transit Garage. It's our newest bus garage that we have uh, within ETS service. Kathleen Andrews is an inspiration. She's our first woman transit operator. She joined us in the 1970s. It was a very different time. She had a very difficult start. Uh, her daughter actually works for us now. She's a training instructor. And we're just really excited that the garage was named after her. So within the garage for operators, when they come in for work, they actually get to come to this beautiful dispatch uh, area and they sign in for their shift and then they're able to go out back uh, to get to their buses in the morning. So when they have a break, when they come off of the morning peak or maybe at the end of their shift, they can come in here, get a drink, they can heat up their food. Play they a little pool. Play some I see you pool. got a pool table in here. Yeah. Exactly. They get to hang out, chill out, enjoy this space. So we're going to walk into the garage and take a look at our buses. So what's really cool about this building, it's lead silver, and we have a lot of really cool environmental uh, aspects to it. So our bus wash is using recycled rainwater that we collect from the roof, and that powers up the bus wash. So how often do you wash the buses? Is it every night when they come in? Or? Exactly, yeah. so they come in, they pull in, they go through the bus wash. Fun fact, when we do our tours with kids, take people out, it's really fun to bring them through the bus wash. So this is where we have our charging infrastructure. So okay. again, in depot, first in North America to take this approach. And you can see the pantographs come down from the ceiling and they make contact with the bus and then they charge the bus's battery. So Carrie, this it's very cold up here in Edmonton. I know you're, <laughs> you're like way up north uh, in Canada. Do you have to park all your vehicles inside? Yeah, it's a decision we made. So we bring all of the vehicles indoors. We are the northernmost kind of large city yeah. uh, in North America. So we definitely have winter weather. <laughs> I don't mind, uh, but some people do. Uh, so all of the vehicles come inside. So this particular facility is over 400,000 square feet. So this is the part of the garage where they actually do all the maintenance. So all of the bus maintenance is done in-house. Both electric and traditional? Exactly. Everything is done here. So it's a really cool, uh, as you can see, it's not too far separated from one another. So the operators can interact uh, with the maintenance staff. And it's quite a large uh, facility, so it can accommodate really everything. Carrie, uh, outside your garage here, this is an amazing one, but you've got a lot of others, right? That's right. So this is one of six facilities that we have for ATS service. We wish you all the best as you awesome. continue to go forward. Oh, thank you so much, Paul. It's been great. 
Mike, you were here when all this was getting built, right? Yeah, I was very fortunate. I've worked in different capacities over the years and met the ETS uh, transit team. And yeah, I was just so happy to be when this project was underway. It was great. They they really championed how to take this technology to the workforce. Uh, really thought leadership in terms of like, you know, the way they worked with the city, their own workers to, to bring this on board it was really impressive. So yeah, I, was, I benefited that. I mean, we all move around in this industry, but we all know each other as well. So it just uh, worked out perfect that uh, they happened to be the host this year for the CUTA conference and to have you guys up here and sort of showcase some technology in Canada. I mean, it's one of the most impressive uh, barns there is out there. I mean, we've all been yeah. to, to a lot of them. So they've done a lot of innovative stuff here. Uh, and really any of their staff you um, you talk to is a real champion of what they're doing. They got a, a lot of stuff going yeah. on. Now to finish it up, what more iconic Canadian dish than poutine, which is French fries with cheese curds and beef gravy. And I'll wash it down with a John Candy cocktail. <laughs> Edmonton has all kinds of unique public transportation. Like we mentioned, they've got hydrogen fuel, which you saw, electric fuel buses, and also they got a funicular right on the side of the hill, which is basically a cable car on the side of a mountain. It goes down to the North Saskatchewan River. Let's hop on board and let's remember what we did today. Edmonton, known for its oil, has pivoted to new energy sources for its bus fleet. Under the leadership of visionaries, they now are leading Canada, as Gretzky famously once said, to where the puck is going to be, not to where it has been. Thank you so much for always joining us each month here on Transit Unplugged TV. Make sure you like and subscribe to us here on YouTube.